I've learned a lot about art in three years, but I still have so much to learn and so much to do. I have so many ideas, but right now I'm lost. So for my own sake, I'm now trying to paint out the bigger picture of the journey ahead of me so that then I can begin to move forward on the quest towards creating the art I really want to. Let's begin there, at the end, and work our way back through all the obstacles in the way. I want to create stories. I have a story I'm planning out. I'm not great at names, but I'm calling it the sun, the moon, and the stars. Given that, I figured I would make a set of those three tarot cards that also represent the three main characters. So far, I've made this one for the sun and the character Morgan, so no, it's not Jesus, but he is meant to be a holy warrior, a paladin of the sun, and this tarot symbolizes rebirth. With this character, I really want to explore love. But let's make tarot cards for the two other main characters. For the stars is the character Fjär, who is the protagonist of the story, although in the second half of the story he will also be the villain. With him, I want to explore the fight against evil. He who battles with monsters should take care lest he too becomes a monster and all that. Although the real villains, the evil he battles against, will be true evil, which I used to think wasn't as interesting. The classic comparison is Lord of the Rings with A Song of Ice and Fire. The supposedly simple, good versus evil, light versus dark, versus the memorially complex shades of grey. For the record, I love both series. Because The Song of Ice and Fire isn't finished, it can't be evaluated accurately, but even so, I would say I rate Lord of the Rings higher as a piece of art. I disagree with the quote, art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. For one, art should be a personal expression, but when it comes to the art that should culturally be highlighted, I believe it's art that inspires a love for beautiful things, which is a quote from Tolkien and what Tolkien's work achieves. It fills you with a lust for life, the belief that there's good in this world and it's worth fighting for. Whereas A Song of Ice and Fire is rather demoralizing. In our own lives, on a small scale, the latter seems more true to reality. But when I looked and started to understand the bigger picture of our world, I realized true evil does really exist. However, I differ with Tolkien in believing how to fight it. Of course, fighting fire with fire is a slippery slope, but that just makes it so interesting to explore. For the moon is the character Saga. I do put thought into names, I'm just not very passionate, passionate about words and language. But something I want to explore, not just with this character, but the story in general, is the loss of mythology. She's going to be an exiled princess from a stolen kingdom, which is like a pretty big trope, right? But I think there's something to that, and I think tropes are connected to mythology in some way. I want to get further into that, but first I want to go on a tangent about what I've learned about authenticity. In my last video, which is a video that I can finally say that I'm proud of, unlike my other videos, not because it performed well, but because it was authentic to me, it meant something to me to make. Compared to my other videos, back then, I didn't think anybody would be interested in me, but rather the value I would provide in terms of like tutorials or advice or whatever. But even though I had that mindset, there would still be moments where I was just being myself. I hadn't managed to edit all of it out. And there was a single comment referencing, referencing a segment like that in one video that was one of the things that made me realize that I had it all wrong. Because nobody ever commented, nobody ever cared about the editing I spent hours on. But this brief moment in one video where I just talked about like the struggles of art that I was dealing with, that somebody did care about. Other things that made me realize the truth was how I look at YouTubers like, I'm absolutely sick of YouTubers that give advice as if they know everything. Even seeing videos titled like, you need to do this, you should do that, like, ah, oh, it's so tiresome. And this isn't specific to art. Like, the few people who give advice that I respect 
are the ones that admit to not knowing everything, that don't just regurgitate all this standard advice that they've taken from others. And people like this generally do something with their life. They have actual experiences. So on top of them being authentic, they do actually know some things. Unlike the hordes of example, 15 year old boys making videos about what it means to be a man, how you should live your life and shit like that. Or me making video about making videos about how to stylize when I haven't even found my style. I'm not saying I'm going to stop doing tutor tutorials or that or that I'll never use how to in a title again but I'll make videos about things that I want to learn or how I do certain things and maybe that will be of some use to you. But since then, I have also realized that there is such a thing as being too authentic. Although in art, that's certainly preferable to not being authentic enough. An example would be if you say or act on every thought that pops in your head or in art, if I draw every idea I get, because if I look at my Instagram, that's an example of that. It's completely random. I didn't have an overall direction. So if I got the idea to draw something, I would go with it. But these different ideas, they went in different directions. So I wasn't going anywhere. Now, of course, that's not terrible. It's still better than not drawing at all. I still learned a little bit from each of these. And of course, some of the random ideas you get are actually good. Some of these actually mean something to me. This one, this one, this one, so on. So, but authenticity is unfortunately not as simple as doing whatever you feel like at any given moment. Because if you value every idea that pops in your head, then you value none of them. And this is kind of related to trying versus not trying, which I'm going to talk about more later. But authenticity following your heart isn't about listening to everything that you think or feel but knowing which part of yourself to listen to but i also mean too authentic in the sense of oversharing which i will end up doing here sometimes because in real life i rarely speak my mind when i say what i truly think people hear something completely different so back to the laws of mythology which is kind of an oxymoron or whatever the word is because i think that mythology is about that which has been lost a people trying to make sense of this feeling that there have been monumental things that have been lost to time or other forces the people before them knew profound truths so like norse paganism and my and mythology which we still know a decent amount about right of course, the general perception of it has been bastardized by like Marvel or whatever. But even with the historical sources we do have, there's this feeling that all of it together said something more than we can understand now. Like the reason behind all of it, the reason why we see the same patterns in different mythologies all over the world. Wait, like what were they really trying to tell us? And being cut off from that, being cut off from like your ancestors, is something that I really resonate with because I don't look like it. I don't look like I'm from Scandinavia, but I'm 75% Swedish and then 25% West African. And so in this fantasy story, this is the first map I've made for it. So it's not definitive, but this continent is going to be like equivalent to Scandinavia and Northern Europe where Fjär and Sagar will be from. Then these islands, the northern ones, are going to be inspired by like Celtic mythologies and folklore, where the character Morgan will be from. And then the rest of these islands will be like a mix of Anglo-Saxon, Greek and Roman empires. And these continents, they're going to be like ruined and corrupted. Whatever civilization was there has been overtaken by the undead. Or maybe only eventually so. Because the story is going to be divided into two different time periods, a thousand years apart. Although in terms of advance of technology, it would only be equivalent to going from like 900 after Christ to the 1500s. So Morgan is going to live a thousand years later than the other characters. But due to undeath or other forms of mortality, some of the characters from the first half of the story will still be around for the second half. One of which will be a character that I haven't named yet, 
but he's going to be Saga's father. So he was king, but by the time the story starts, his kingdom has been usurped and he will have been killed for the first time. He's going to be a character through which the gods of this world will act. Every time he dies, he's reincarnated. For this character, I'm inspired both by the fact that in our world, some people believe that the spirit of Odin or Wotan is reincarnated into different conquerors throughout history, as well as the characters Beric Dondarrion from Game of Thrones and Agni from Fire Punch. I won't spoil Fire Punch because you should read it. It's like Chainsaw Man combined with Berserk. Uh, but sadly, Game of Thrones stopped airing after season five, so no one knows how Beric Dondarrion's story ends, but he gets reincarnated every death. Every time he dies, he loses a bit of himself. He becomes less. And I thought, what if you take that concept to the extreme? So this character, maybe the fact that I don't have a name for him will be part of his character. He dies so many times he forgets his name. All he remembers is he must fulfill his mission, even when he forgets why he's doing it. While I'm ranting, you may have noticed that the painting isn't going so well, which leads us to talking about art style. Because while sometimes paintings don't turn out well because painting is hard, but also because I haven't actually found my style, sometimes the style of my drawings clash with the style of my painting which is happening here. I tried to redraw the proportions a bit more realistically, but the st painting still wasn't going well, and then I crashed anyway, which is fine. I wanted to start over. When it comes to finding my style, I have been thinking that it's no use trying to chase the style itself when I'm not focused on a project. As I said, my art has been pretty much random for a long time, random in subject and random in style. I know a little bit about what style I want. I want somewhat realistic proportions. I don't want to render too much because I don't enjoy doing it or the look of it. I want to rely a lot on strong lighting because I enjoy painting with strong light. But beyond that, making decisions about what I want my style to be when I'm not at the stage of creating the art I truly want, it feels pointless. There's no weight to choosing one thing over the other. And uh, this painting isn't working either. God damn it. I'll start over again. Honestly, I wouldn't mind having to try over and over, getting up again and again. But the problem is that it doesn't actually work. The harder I try, the worse it gets. Well, after a few more failed attempts, I decided that trying to make this tarot card while trying to like figure out everything about my style was like too much. So instead, I decided to just paint over some old art. Whenever I'm frustrated with art, I usually find that relaxing. And painting in grayscale in, gener in general is also something I find relaxing. And it was nice, but I still feel none the wiser about my style. I'll get back to the moon tarot later. Let's move on to the concept of improvement in general and also talk about learning different art mediums. I started with digital art and then I've been keeping a traditional sketchbook for like a year and a half, but it's only been like low effort doodling. So I haven't really gotten any better at it. Recently, I decided to put actual focus on drawing. I'm approaching it by both trying to improve my technical skills by doing these line exercises which look really boring, but they're honestly not that bad. Also, trying to get better at using a pencil to shade, although I haven't been as consistent with this practice. I'm also finally trying to get better at figure drawing. And these things, this is something that really work as practice. It's something that you don't have to be jumping with joy to sit down and do. As I've said before, art as a whole is not something you can approach with a disciplined, just do it mentality. But these are simple enough that you can view it as practice. Of course, if you can turn it into something you truly enjoy, it's 10 times better. But even if it's just practice, it's okay. Figure drawing is still pretty difficult for me and I'm very slow at it. 
but even with pretty inconsistent practice of them, I started feeling a lot more confident with then drawing full body characters from imagination and experimenting with sketching and inking using a fine liner pen. Drawing new mediums and experimenting is something that is easy to overlook when it comes to trying to rekindle the passion you once had for art. Because I feel like I'm looking for some great answer to this immense problem. So I overlook all the small things I could do. I allow the small ideas of inspiration to flow past me because I wanted something bigger. And while taking those small ideas isn't always going to result in anything at all, I had the idea to try plein air painting on my iPad. Although I'm a digital artist, I'm used to my graphic tablet on the PC. Painting on an iPad feels really weird, so I haven't used it at all. But out to the woods I went to lose my mind and gain my soul. But apparently I had forgotten to actually charge the Apple Pencil. But either way, I was already annoyed because a bunch of flies insisted on buzzing around my head, so painting wouldn't have gone any good anyway. How quickly heaven turns to hell. However, I ate blueberries. Sometimes trying out new things work, and sometimes they don't. There's another thing I want to try. Let's do that right now. Recently, I was observing nature, and I was thinking about why I don't do more paintings of nature. It's rare that nature is anything more than a background in my paintings. And when I do a painting with nature as the subject, it's even more rare that I finish it. I was thinking at that time, while I was looking at trees, that if I paint nature, I feel that even at best, I can only capture what is, only copy nature's beauty. I didn't think I could go further because every tree, every plant, every animal, they're such perfect, beautiful specimens of their species. But we people, we fall short, which makes us more interesting in art, that there's more room to draw or paint us, more interesting, more beautiful than the way we are. And because I was thinking that, I've never really tried to push or exaggerate a painting of nature. And even if nature is perfect the way it is, it's still interesting to experiment. So that's what I'm trying to do here. On observation, I have also realized that the way I observe has changed. During 2022 and 2023, I would observe everything around me in a very analytical way, almost deconstructing everything to think about how I would draw or paint that thing. Aha, look at that highlight there, wrapping around the form. Oh, look at those shapes. Hmm, I wonder how a composition like this would look. I don't know if it's for better or worse that it's changed, but now... I'm not really observing the things themselves around me anymore. I'm observing the beauty. It's become something spiritual rather than practical. I've noticed that the moon has been shining during the day and I'm pretty sure the sky is a different color. Do you remember how blue it used to be? So anyway, I've kind of lost the interest to approaching painting improvement in that same analytical way to think so much about brushwork, shape design, and so on. I, I find it hard to care. Maybe that's a bad thing, but it can't be helped. As I said in my last video, I have been trying for a long time and now I'm starting to let go. I don't think that's a very good option either, not in this world. It's a great tragedy of the modern world that the more inclined a person is to creativity, the more likely they are to be consumed by consumption. I wonder how many great works of art will never be created, because the would-be creator spent all his creativity playing World of Warcraft and watching anime, slightly projecting. 
When I started drawing and telling stories, I realized, ah, so this is why I've always been so completely absorbed by stories, because I'm most supposed to make stories of my own. That's why all those fantasy worlds, they appealed to me more than this one. All those characters, they were more interesting to me than people. I'm supposed to create characters and worlds of my own. Before that, I never realized I was a creative person. I mean, I played piano for like 10 years, but I didn't think too much about it. It's very strange how a person can have something dormant in them, not even realizing it's there until one day he wakes up. Although I've always had a longing to go somewhere else, but I used to interpret that as only a longing to not be here. But that's why I'm driven to stories. For me, art is a means to an end to tell stories. It's a means I rather enjoy. I much prefer it to only using words. But if I'm making art without telling stories, which is what I've been doing, I'm very unfulfilled. This is the one scene that I had tried to make, but it didn't really feel any different from just making single images. And while, I mean, a single art piece can tell a story in the sense that it can deliver a message, it can mean something. Whenever I feel strong emotions, despair or hatred, my bread and butter, I try to draw something that captures that feeling, to create a piece with a strong expression that really means something. But I always fail. I can't draw for shit when I feel like that. But then a few weeks ago, I painted this, which certainly expresses how I feel at times, or, you know, literally me. But at the time of making it, I was in a good mood. I only drew it because I randomly saw the reference on Pinterest, even though I've been trying to not rely on scrolling Pinterest to find motivation. I guess it turned out so good because I wasn't trying. Yeah, yeah, Bukowski, I know. Don't try. But those moments when, creatively, everything just falls into place. Nowadays, they're just that. Moments. Most of the time, I have to try. If one does try, didn't you say to go all the way? But Bukowski is right. Art is so good and easy when you don't have to try. All of these troubles and questions about art disappear when you just want to make art so badly. And, well, I have a story I want to tell, right? So why can't I feel that burning desire to work on it no matter what? This is a story that, once I have everything mapped out, will probably take me at least 10 years to draw. And I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be great. But that's also why I can't just start. I'm 21, and I have spent my entire life in this room sitting in this chair and in the last three years that's been in a good way i've been making art and working towards something but i'm more than an artist i think i want to live life as well i want to spend my 20s living i know that i can't do everything i want to do i want to make art i want to save the world i want to escape and go on adventures i want to be a fighter and a father and i know i have to pick and choose I mean, life is a long time. I can do most of what I want to do, eventually, just not at the same time. But making a living as an artist is the only path for me to any of all those other things. But I can't have that as my motivation for art. I know that now. I have to make art for the sake of itself. So maybe I do have to give up on everything else that I want to do. Maybe I have to make my peace with not getting all those things in order to get them. But if I'm trying not to try, am I really not trying? I gave the moon tarot one last shot, and I was really hoping it would work out to add things on a good note for once, but... Well, even if it did, um... All these artistic problems, they're really just the struggles of my life, because I've chosen to intertwine the two. But I've chosen art to be the path 
to life for me. But I still can't accept for art to be the only thing that my life is. My life, it, it feels like Plato's cave. And, um, you know, art is a shadow of something that we, that isn't actually there in real life. I mean, you know, like, if you watch, like, I don't know, if you're on social media, you watch YouTube videos, you, I don't know, watch a football game or whatever, those are shadows of something that is real, and you could have that real thing, we just, we just uh, fucking sit here and rot away for some reason. But art is a shadow of something that the real thing, you know, is not of this world, and... Uh, but I'm just, I'm sick of the cave, and I've made up my mind to leave. I'm going on an adventure. And uh, I'll either find that art really is the best path for me in life, or I'll find some other path in life, and for art then to become something that, that, I, that I don't have to do anymore. But something that I'll just do because I want to do it, which of course is the way it should be. It's a gamble, but I mean, the way we live, this doesn't constitute living. I'll take the risk. <laughs>